Hi there, I am Deanna Perriot, Senior Leader with Epicure, and I'm here to show you all about Epicure's Fresh Cheese Maker. Have you ever made your own cheese at home? This is a fun little gadget which will help you to make it easy and simple. Do you guys like that? I like that. Inside your box, there are streamlined directions. There's six steps. One of them is literally to take it out of the fridge and put it onto a plate. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, I am going to make one today for a demonstration, but first let me show you a little bit of features. So there is the bowl, a colander, which fits nicely inside, and then also a silicone lid, which has a pre-measurement for the acid that you'll need to mix with the milk and create cheese. You only need four ingredients to make the cheese. You need some type of milk. You can use any percent uh, milk you want. Cow or goat, both work. Uh, and if you want to make vegan cheese, you can also use soy milk. That will work as well. Nut milks uh, will not work because they do not contain enough protein to react with the acid and create a cheese. So. Uh, soy milk if you want vegan. The second ingredient you need is some kind of acid. So you can use a vinegar or if you have any fresh lemons or fresh limes around you could use our two-in-one citrus press and squeeze some fresh juice and use that to mix with the milk. Third ingredient is seasoning of your choice. So this is like a choose your own adventure. The milk and the vinegar or um, acid are going to uh, create just a general base. Then whatever seasoning you decide to make it is going to determine if it's going to be like a dessert cheese where you could be making some of our delicious uh, chia jam or you could do a savory cheese. Today I'm going to do savory and I will be using our spinach dip mix. So any way you slice it, choose your own adventure cheese. Very simple. The last ingredient is salt. You need salt to make the flavor pop and for it to be more cheese-like. Uh, we have amazing grinders that will help um, portion out the exact amount you need and it's just nice and easy. So. Without further ado, first thing you do, you don't need this yet at all, you're going to need to heat the milk. So you, uh, I recommend putting it on a microwave safe plate because when you are heating a dairy product in the microwave, the milk tends to form a skin which will cause it to kind of boil over and then, and then pop back down. So it does stand a chance that it could get up and over the lid. Save yourself the trouble of a potential mess by just having it on a plate. So you start four cups of milk. I'm just doing regular 2% organic milk because that's what we had in the house. Now if you wanted to do a smaller amount, you can cut this recipe in half and it will still work. All right, there it is, milk is in. Next step is heating this in the microwave. The directions say 12 to 14 minutes. Uh, you want it to get to a nice rolling boil. Some microwaves that run high might do that in eight minutes. So it's good to just learn your microwave and see what works and maybe check on it about the eight minute mark to see if you can see if it's actually bubbling and boiling because then you could be done and take it out. But I am going to put this in my microwave and I will be right back. All right, step one complete. I did uh, 12 minutes in the microwave and one thing to note, um, there is a huge bold box right there that talks about using oven mitts when you take this 
out of the microwave. It is going to be very hot. There's boiling liquid in it. So get yourself a nice towel or use oven mitts for getting that out of the microwave. The next super duper important step there on the sheet is just simply taking any old spoon and you're tapping the sides and that's to break the surface tension. I talked about how when you're um, boiling a milk product, a dairy product, it will form a skin. You are going to be adding stuff to this and you want to break that tension so that it doesn't splash up at you, right? So just tap around the sides and make sure that you have broken the tension. There you go. Easy as that. We are now on to step three down here. So we are going to be adding our um, acidic product, which is going to be white wine vinegar today, and then also the salt and the seasoning. So in, this is the lid that comes with it. And I don't know if you can see on camera, there's some little lines right inside the lip. When you are using fresh uh, lemon or lime juice and squeezing right into this little container, you'll be going to the top line. That will actually be two tablespoons. If you're using a bottled vinegar, then you're gonna to go to the bottom line, which will be one tablespoon plus one teaspoon. I have learned that um, this part is not really an exact science. I accidentally used way too much and it actually worked just fine. So don't stress out too much. But it is nice to be able to have this lid for the measurement. So just pour that right in. Ta-da. Then we need seasoning. So you will use one tablespoon of any dip mix of your choice. And then you're gonna want a half a teaspoon of salt. So first I'm gonna do the dip mix. This is our four in one measuring spoon. It fits right in the jar. I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle that along the top. And then some sea salt. Very fine mist. So I needed half a teaspoon, which is the back measurement. I don't think that's going to be nearly enough. No, that's okay. I can grind more and my spoon's going to stay upright all by itself. <laughs> I've never actually measured with salt before. I usually just shake some on uh, or grind some on whatever food I'm having. So. This is an adventure to actually do a measurement. I also recently learned that you can adjust the fineness um, inside of here, so that's pretty cool. There we go. That's about right. All right, very nice. A little extra in there, why not? It's cheese. So, uh, at this point, so I've boiled the milk, I've added the acid, I've added the seasoning, and I've added the salt. I've added the four ingredients. The directions say to stir it up at this point, but I have watched a couple training videos of fellow lazy chefs like myself who say that stirring it is actually not necessary, and also that stirring it will break it into smaller curds, which causes it to take longer to go... Um, through the strainer. So their cheeses have turned out amazing. So I'm gonna go the lazy route and not stir it. Like the rebel I am. We are on step, still step three. I gotta put the lid on and just let this sit for 30 minutes. So I will be back in 30 minutes. Okay, I have let the cheese sit for 30 minutes, just laying out on the counter. And now 
The next step involves this beautiful little colander. So you can see these are pretty tightly together and you do this over the sink, which I don't have a good enough um, tripod to bring with me and actually let you see this happening. But what I will be doing is just pouring this out and the whey is going to go away and the curds are going to stay in the colander and you just let that sit and drain. So I shall be back again.